four, four things that faith is not. Four things. Number one, faith is not mental accent. Number two, faith is not presumptions. There are many people who assume or suppose that something is so, but they don't have the fact that forms the basis of their conviction. Does God bless people? Yes. How do you know? Uh, the Bible says so. Where? What does the Bible say? He doesn't know. And before you know, he starts quoting parables. So he just have assumptions and presumptions and presuppositions. He has never examined them. Number three, what faith is not? It's not natural believism. Many people think they have faith, but all their trust and all their belief is in the realm of facts. Natural believism is a fact-based faith. That is not faith. If they don't see an evidence, it's the Thomas kind of faith. Unless I see him and I see the, oh, the, the imprint on his palm, I will not believe. The last thing faith is not is self-confidence. Many people are self-confident and charismatic and they assume that's faith. Because you are tall and broad on the chest and you have some very deep voice. That's good. You come to a place with your suit and you say, you know, um, I'll, I'll see what I can do about that. It's good when you are doing your job for diplomatic relationship. But if you are looking for the intervention of a spirit, natural confidence is a limitation. The moment you trust in yourself, you have lost. What is faith? The word faith is the word pistis. And the word pistis simply means reposing your confidence and your trust in another. Waiting upon his intervention for your own victory. Putting your confidence and your trust in another. Waiting upon his intervention for your own victory. No wonder God instructed that we should walk by faith. It is designed in a way that flesh can never be glorified. It is designed in a way that only God can be glorified. And so when a man is walking by faith, his trust is in God. And his trust is in God's ability. So it is the intervention of God or the putting the ability of God to work that engenders his own victory. A simple technology, but many have never come to accept it. You know the problem with many people? They feel God wastes time. Why would I be waiting on God when I know what to do? But they don't know that faith is not an act, it's a life. Because you may want to do something that you can do by your own ability. And then you decide that for now, I don't need faith. You will now come to a point where all your abilities put together can't do it. You now start learning what you should be mastering. And then you discover it doesn't work. That's why many fail in the school of faith. They want to write a simple exam. They understand literature, so no need to trust God. Come on, what is literature? Then they write the exam of literature, but they go into the exam of life. Where they need successful living. They now discover that here, they don't have all it takes. That's when they now start learning to trust God. When they should be mastering trusting God. For faith to be faith, three things must be in place. Number one, there must be one in whom you trust or your trust is put. So you can't say you are walking by faith when you will not state clearly without contradiction whom your total confidence, assurance and trust is in. Any man who is walking by faith can tell you without ambiguity that this is the source of all my answers and victory. There must be one in whom your trust rest. If that cannot be spelled out in your life, you are not a man of faith. Number two, for faith to be faith, there must be a basis. And for us who are Christians, the basis of our faith are the promises of God, the nature of God, and the possibilities of God that he has assured us. So when you find a man who is walking by faith, he doesn't just come. And that's why I showed you what faith is not. Talking and floating in limbo. Anything he tells you, his assurance is either in God's character or in God's word, the integrity of God's word, or in the promises that God has made, or in the possibilities that God has affirmed. Those bases are the foundations of his faith. If I go to lay hands on the sick now, 
I'm not doing it because I'm being creative. I'm doing it because I believe in the integrity of the spoken word of Jesus. That when I lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. And so when I'm going to lay hands on the sick, if I am feeling powerful, that is good. But my feelings are not the basis of my action. So whether I feel it or I don't feel it, Jesus said, lay hands on the sick. So the basis for my action must be clear at all times. The reason many don't get the faith results is because they are taking actions that are baseless. When you speak with that audacity, what is he anchoring on? Is there a word for it? Is there something you know about God's nature? And I'm saying this the way I'm saying it so that you know, this is not about quoting scriptures or memorizing scriptures. If you remember scriptures, that is good. But what we are talking about here is beyond the way King James is written. Because many people feel it's not faith until it is thou shalt. Beholdest thou. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about God's position on every subject matter. And so if I know God's position, I stand where God is standing. And so I don't need to say, if thou layest thy hands on the sick, they shall recover. No, I can know it in pidgin English. If I put my hand on top sick person, it will recover. It will produce the same result. It's not King James. It's God's position. That's the basis. And then number three, what makes faith faith is that there must always be action. He said, faith without works is dead. And so there are many persons who are trying to live the faith life, but there is no clear definition of whom their confidence rests on. When they are making a decree, they are making a statement, part of that confidence is in their uncle who is a vice president. Or a senator. When they are making a decree on another time, part of their confidence is on their position on their job. When they are making a statement, part of their confidence is on the money somebody promised them. And so you see that their lives are scattered. Every other thing that brings success to your life is a channel God is using. And so a man of faith, any day, any time, in whatever context he speaks, his assurance is God. I showed you from Psalm 23 verse 1 last on Sunday. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd. He had strong warriors. He was a king. He, was, he, had, he had experienced himself, but there was no time. He said anything. Listen, every time you take action, ask yourself, am I saying this because of my savings? Am I saying this because of my position or my job? Am I saying this because of somebody who promised me? Am I saying this because of a friend? Am I saying this because a man of faith, 100 over 100, every time he's talking or doing anything, it is God and God only. He sees every other person, system or team as a channel. There will never be a time when the place of God will be in contention. And a man of faith, for every action he takes, there's a basis for it. Either because of what he knows about the nature of God or because of a promise he's standing on or because of a revelation from the word of God. If you are there, you are safe. And finally, a man of faith will always cap all he does with corresponding action. He said, thou believest that there's only one God. James 2, 19. He said, thou doest well. He said, the devil also believes and trembles. He said, but O ye vain man, knowest not thou that faith without works is dead. And in verse 26, he said, for as the body without the spirit is dead. He said, also faith without works is dead. So even if you believe God, you stand on his word or his nature. If you don't have action, you are not in faith. These are the three things or the three triangle that completes the circuit of faith. Is this not simple? But when you walk through life, you discover it's hard. Because many times, when we confront issues, we confront them because of what our friends promised us. Many times when we confront issues, we confront them because of where we are walking. Don't you know, sometimes the way we are excited when we are promoted in life is because we think our levels have changed. What you do in life doesn't change your level. The promotion you get on your job does not change your level. Your level is what God calls you part-time. You can get a promotion on your job if, you're, if what God calls you have not changed, you have not promoted. Because they may give you a physical promotion, it can kill you. 
So a man's level actually changes if his status with God changes. You need to know this. Before you celebrate your promotion on your job and it becomes the demerit in your faith work. Before you celebrate your increased income and it becomes the demerit of your faith work. Before you celebrate your new relationships. Ah! Now I have the, uh, the, the phone number of the chief of army staff. I know the president personally. You will be shocked. There are many things the president cannot do. When the devil brings cancer, the president will be helpless like every other person. The only one who can answer all the crises of life is the one your faith stands on. And so a man of faith every day in every circumstance has one confidant. is God. Has one basis. God's position. Which is either his nature or his word. And we always act as a sign that he believes God and he believes the basis for his action. If this cycle is complete, you can tell yourself, I am a man of faith.